David Barry reporting for Jewish Online Magazine. Um, our special guest today is a student from Hasman in High School. He took his camcorder to Poland and recorded some highlights um, from his trip. Uh, welcome to Jewish Online Magazine. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Um, the student is going to uh, talk over the video clips that he captured and uh, we'll see how the chat develops. Thank you. Over here we see the ghetto where the Jews were placed under the German rule. The uh, basement place over here is the Umschlag plant. The Umschlag plant is where they were where they were put in together to be transported into the most ugly disgusting place the Germans put us in, the, the death camp. They put us here put us into tiny, tiny cattle racks. It was, it, it was unbearable. It was so, so squashy. Even with us, there were only 60 of us in the cattle car and I felt tremendously squashed. I can't imagine the pain that they must have gone through. This is the path that they were driven along. Once they put it put into the cattle cart, the Germans drove us along this path, bumpy, with loads of stones on. People were bumping around. Uh, the um, the car the suitcases were bumping everywhere. It was a disgusting, unbearable ride, and I wasn't even on it. And that's that's how I feel. Over here is the wall of the ghetto again, where the Germans placed us. It was about 19 people to a tiny, tiny room. So if people think they're squashed nowadays, you know, they should uh, rethink because they were living in tremendous, disgusting conditions, which isn't even suitable for, for any human, which is unbearable. Over here, again, is the Umschlag plant where uh, people, we are, we are standing around commemorating the people that were, that stood here. Over here is the, is the memoir, is the, memorabilia that was put in for the Jews of Warsaw. Again, over here we're putting candles, lighting candles over here just to commemorate how, you know, the side, about Jews the, the Jews of Warsaw, how they rebelled against the Jews Germans and how they managed to actually escape free from the Germans with a lot of fake. Of fake. <clears throat> over here we are driving along, that is actually the yeah. new Polish stadium which they use for the football, which is quite ironic, which is a very, very nice stadium. So people think Poland is all, you know, it's all bad. There, there was a very nice stadium just, just, just on the side. Over here is my Danik. My Danik can actually be re can actually can start working again within two days. That that's the drum is did not have enough time to bomb it. It's just we we went into the gas chambers. The gas chambers could be could be restarted right now and they could start uh, they could start killing Jews whenever they wanted. That it was really, really graphic. The, the emotions really, really got us there because it, it wasn't bombed. It wasn't just a field. It was at, we were actually standing where our ancestors were. We were actually standing in the actual death camps, in the crematoriums that they were. And for me, it was just I, I was overcome with emotions. I didn't actually have anything to say. Just a feeling went through my body, and I was just overcome with. Fear really for them. I, I I I was scared to be in there, and I wasn't even being slaughtered. Over here are the are the are the bowels which people people slept in. They were absolutely disgusting. Over here is the is the gas chamber, and even our 70 years after, I could still smell the stench of gas in the in the room. I I, I had to go outside. I was coughing so badly. It was horrible. I wasn't. I wasn't actually getting gas. I could still smell the gas from 70 years ago. It was shocking. We then went into the the shower rooms where people were supposedly showered, but they weren't really. People that you know came down from the showers, gas. They were showered in horrible, horrible gas. They were told to get undressed. They thought they're going for nice showers. They've been on the cattle cart for three days. They were, it was so hot. They thought, yes, I'm finally going for a nice shower. They get underneath the taps. What comes underneath comes hot, boiling gas, which just kills them instantly. It's a horrible, horrible death. You choke and choke and choke. It's absolutely horrible. I felt sick being in there. Over here, there we go back to the bow. This is this is in what this is in the shower room. You can see how squashed it was. It was horrible. There was one tiny window which people could look out for. They, 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 they could have a glimmer of hope over there. That's where they could like, look out for. They could see the barrels. There wasn't really any glimmer of hope for them. They were about to be slaughtered to their deaths, like cattle to the cattle to the about to get slaughtered. It was absolutely disgusting. Over here again, this is when they're walking from the showers 
to the actual gas chamber itself it was a tiny tiny room not very big at all they stuffed loads of people in there on a good day they slaughtered 28,000 people per day it was unbelievable the way they just put us all in there like we were animals they just stuffed everyone in there and they just they shut the door bolted it made sure they were out then just pressed one button and it immediately annihilated absolutely everyone over here we can see the barbed wire i was standing inside and i and i tried to look outside and even though i was free to go out i felt like i was trapped and then i looked and then i went out and looked from the outside and I looked in and I could, uh, I just felt absolutely sick. People, they made people run around the field so they could be used as target practice. They could be used as target practice. It was absolutely shocking. Over here we're in now in Auschwitz in a massive room full of shoes, hair, anything you can think of. A massive room full of shoes, each shoe. Over here you can see the mould on the, on the wall. That's from, that, it's been used 70 years ago but there's that room stank of death, um, gas, and absolutely horrible, horrible, treacherous stuff. We were the, that's where the women were, that the women's bouts, we, we, we went in there and we sang Shalom Aleichem. It was Friday night, we sang Shalom Aleichem and Aisha's Chayel, but to commemorate the women, they were so important. They, there were stories of women that didn't have to get killed, but they went in with the children to the gas chambers to make sure the children weren't dead by themselves they were absolutely influential they made sure that the kids weren't at the last minute by themselves and we had I had such tremendous respect for these women who gave up their lives for their children it was it was amazing over here now it's totally black because we are in the gas chamber in Auschwitz it's just a bolted door no windows at all just one pipe coming from the ceiling one button loads of gas comes out millions of Jews die within about half an hour here is the here is the crematorium where they used to burn the bodies they used to get hundreds of bodies put them on a on a on a train to slide them into the oven just to burn the bodies just to give extra pain they're already dead why did they need to add more pain they just wanted to kill them to add for their their own pleasure really we were just standing around we sang Shmai Yisrael, just to uh, these last people, they died. They, they they were screaming from their lungs. Shmai Yisrael, even the secular people, they were just dying. Our kiddush Hashem, and we have to have tremendous respect for these people who died. Our kiddush Hashem. Here we are davening in the in one of the bowels in in Maidanik. I don't think anyone had as much kavana as there as they would have ever. Here is the yeshiva of Lublin, where Rabbi, Rabbi Shapiro first founded it. You have to go 200 black pair to get into this yeshiva. It's just showing us the amount, the, the significance of Judaism before the war. We had, there, were, there, there were so many people in this yeshiva, and they came around and just absolutely annihilated the base. There were so many important Rabbonim lived in Warsaw. We have so many can't even remember them by hand and all, all the Jew and all the Germans who came and just annihilated them completely. It's a beautiful place for Medrash nowadays and they're trying to re re renovate it so groups can come and stay and understand the goodness of that place. Over here we are still in the shul. We didn't, I didn't have the zechus to walk through those doors. I wouldn't have had the zechus but we did. In this shul, we, the Germans came and bombed the base, totally got it out. But what we did was they burned all the Sefer Torah. There was one parchment left of the Sefer Torah from the last Sedra, um, there was only one tiny square. We got that square and we did hakofas with it round the, round the shul. We brought the shul back to life. The Germans think they can destroy us. No, they can't. We'll come back to the places that they destroyed and we'll bring it back to life with, with the hakofas. We had, there, if there are, there are no times in Poland. Let's not pretend there's not, but this was a time full of happiness that we'd finally come back to the place that the Germans thought they, they destroyed and we came back and brought it back to life. The rabbi we see there is saying Kelmare Rach, I mean for the people that were killed. It's a massive, massive synagogue. And it was just quite absolutely amazing to see. Over here, this is a cattle cart that the Jews were, were put in. Over here again is in the, is in the, is in the shower rooms. Those are the last remaining parchments that the Germans well, that, that was survived from the Germans. Those ones we did have coffers with. We thought the Germans thought they could destroy every single Sefer Torah, every single piece of Judaism that we had. But no, we had that piece left as that white, tiny piece of parchment that we did have coffers with. This is the hotel, which I thought was actually a proper scary hotel. It was 
it smelled to Germans, so to speak. I, I, when I was walking down the corridor, I was scared to be in a bedroom by myself because I could hear the German boots walking around. I was, I didn't want to be in there by myself. Here is the shore for the Normani Melech Zetzal, where the great, great rabbi of 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 the gent. This he was a great, great rabbi. He has his own mikvah down below. We and what we did was this was a month that we hadn't lain yet, so we auctioned off the, um, the aliyahs to lane and, and it all going to the Naomali Melech Shul. It was just a massive, massive, massive place. Over here is the Norm Ali Melech's caver. We're all dabbling around, giving our own, um, giving our own kvittal, trying to play to the play to the sadik who who is lying right there. It was an absolutely emotional moment for everyone there. They were all thinking back to everything that happened and trying to relate back their own lives and give and give and try to think of something. Here again is the. Um, I'm not entirely sure who's who's grave. This is is um, another great. Another great rabbi, over here we're in the bedroom of one of the hotels we're staying at. This is after a great time in the shul of doing hakofas, everyone is in a high spirit. We are thinking, you know, the, they did try to kill us, yes, but they can't anymore. Here are the train tracks leading to Auschwitz. We were, we were going along right next to the train tracks that were in Auschwitz. We could hear our brethren on the cattle's cattle cots screaming, trying to let themselves out, trying to go to the window for one little peek, but they couldn't. Over here, we're looking into the into the barbed wire that we see going into Auschwitz. It was I could, I could, there is no words to even explain looking into the barbed wire. When we know we go in, we're gonna be able to come out. The people that went in there, they had absolutely no idea they were gonna go out. We went through the gates of the gates of hell. That's what they're called. They're this train truck, but we knew we were gonna get out. We had no problem. Our brethren, they went in there knowing it was their last, last time, but they still kept that in Hashem. They still realized that that's what it was all about. Over here again, we're in Auschwitz, we're walking down the train tracks where the train led them. Over here we know the famous time where the men, he either points to the right or to the left, whether you're going to go to death or where you're going to go to, go to work in the camps. This is where they slept. It was three people per bed. That's how shocking it was. And if, if you think there were, there were three bunks, if someone did, had dysentery on the top, then you'd feel it on the bottom. It might collapse on you. You had absolutely no idea what was going to happen. Here is the... Um, here is the gas chamber where they've actually completely destroyed it to make sure no one understands what it was. We know what it was. We know what went on there. There's, there, there, is, there is no hiding it. Here is the mass grave. 800 children died here. It was breathtaking to, to I couldn't, I didn't actually, I think everyone was crying then because the, the children are so, so innocent. They have, why should they die? The Germans, they were ruthless animals. Why would you want to kill an, a, a child who's done nothing, nothing wrong in their life? We were all just so flabbergasted by the animalistic behavior. We were shocked, shocked, shocked. On the last day, we went to the cattle carts in right near uh, Auschwitz where they were where they were um, where they were transported and it was this tiny tiny room we were all so squashed yet that wasn't troubling us we were thinking there were 60 of us and we were squashed and usually there'd be 200 people with their suitcases we were we were we were we, we answered completely on the Matzah Shabbos we went to Amon Gert's basement he was the ruthless sadistic killer of one of the labor camps he beat up his Jewish maid who lived in the basement we went to that same basement and made half dollar there. He thought he had killed all the Jews, but we went to the basement where he beat up and killed one of his maids and we brought it back to life. We went into his uh into his living room and we saw where he lived. There have been 36 owners in the past 70 years in that house. That shows you that it's pretty, pretty scary to live there. You can still hear the ruthless animal walking around down the stairs with his German boots stamping, stamping around. I didn't want to go in. I was so, so scared. And to end off this amazing trip, we went to the um, Sarah Schneer's cave, the Keva, the the woman who started Beis Yaakov, the the the, the foremost girl, um, girl education in the in this century. She started off in Poland, and we have to gain so much chizuk from her that even in even in times of war, she still managed. She still wants still to see. She, she still dreams of having a girl's education. And I think what we can take from this trip is, whenever you think I'm too tired, I can't be bothered. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I'm cold. Think back to what our brethren went to. You, you don't you don't know what it feels like to be cold. You don't know what it feels like to be hungry. These dudes would have given anything to have one more 
one more Amida. So when we're doubling Amida, we should have extra Gavona. They would have done anything to have that extra Gavona, to bench one more time, to make a blocker one more time. So whenever we have, whenever we confronted, oh, I can't bother to learn to, I can't bother to do this, can't bother to do that, think back to them. They would give so, so much to do one extra mitzvah. We can do it, let's not give up the chance. Thank you so much. Um, what else can I say? Um, you've vividly described the videos that you've took and um, I think uh, we should end uh, we should end it there and um, thank you very much thank you for having me